Hi members, today I will be discussing with you the inner workings of a VE pyroplast. I have here a typical example of a VE injection pump. Before we start making any repairs, we should first look at the pump's assembly number. It's usually indicated on the pump's housing. Here we have another one with a sticker still on. You can identify the parts of the pump by means of its assembly number. This one is the Zexel assembly number. This one is the Mitsubishi part number. From here, you can identify the internal parts of the injection pump. In some cases where the sticker in the housing disappears, you can also use the, the nameplate on the pump housing. On top, there's a serial number. In the middle, the license Bosch number. From here, you can see some things about the pump. That is, this one is for a four-cylinder engine, a 10 millimeter diameter plunger, and the governing speed, as well as the direction of the rotation of the pump, as viewed from the drive side. Right rotation. I have here another example of a pump indicating the serial number, the pump number, the license Bosch number. From here you can see this pump is for a four cylinder engine and it has a 10 millimeter diameter plunger. This indicates the governing speed and this indicates the direction of rotation, which is clockwise. From the pump number, you can also find the list of parts for this pump using the Zexel CD by Bosch. Because this is a Zexel pump, you need the Zexel CDs to identify the parts and calibration data. This pump uses the same fuel to lubricate its internal parts. It is a compact type of pump in which the timing device and the supply pump situated here is built inside the pump. This feed pump which has a rotor and four blades. which slide in and out. This feed pump is driven by the pump's drive shaft. This key situated here slots inside the feed pump. As you can see, there's a slot on the rotor for the key to go in. As the drive shaft turns, so does the rotor. These blades move outward and inward. They sweep the fuel and generate pressure. So how does the pump pressurize and inject fuel? There are two pressures 
generated inside the pump. The low pressure side generated by the feed pump and the high pressure side generated by the plunger on the rotor head side. The plunger's rotating and reciprocating movement is accomplished by the scan plate and the roller assembly. The drive shaft is coupled to the cam plate. And as it rotates, as the drive shaft turns, rotating and reciprocating movement is achieved. And plunger These are called inlet slits. Fuel goes in the plunger's inlet slits and comes out on the outlet slit. This is called the equalizing slit. Once fuel injection is done, this in turn will relieve the excess pressure inside the distributor head after injection. And there's also a cut-off slit. This is called a control sleeve. So how does this determine the fuel? As the plunger rotates and reciprocates, the plunger will continue to inject fuel As long as, as long as the cutoff slit, the slit is not exposed. The amount of fuel injected is determined by the position of the control sleeve on the plunger in relation to the cutoff slit. If I move the control sleeve, towards the distributor head it will take a longer time for the cutoff slit to be exposed therefore increasing fuel delivery but if I move the control slit toward the drive side and as the plunger rotates and reciprocates you will notice that the cutoff slit is exposed early. This lessens the amount of fuel injected. Fuel goes in from the pump's chamber to the inlet side of the distributor head. Then there's a solenoid valve that cuts or allows fuel to go inside the distributor head and then gets pressurized by the plunger. Once the plunger pressurizes and delivers fuel to the outlet side of the distributor head, what prevents fuel from coming back in? There is what you call a delivery valve.
you have your spring, the little valve holder, and the delivery valve. This delivery valve acts as a check valve which prevents fuel from coming back into the pump. Next, we take a look at the pump's timing device. How it advances fuel injection. Pressure from the pump's chamber goes into the high pressure side of the timing device and pushes this piston, which in turn moves the roller in an advanced position. This advancing movement causes the cam disc to move up much more earlier. Injection timing is moved back by the spring. Pressure inside the pump's chamber is regulated by this valve. Once excess pressure is generated inside the pump chamber, this valve will open it has a piston inside and will open this port, returning back the fuel to the inlet side of the pump. Fuel delivery at various speeds is controlled by the flyweights and governor lever assembly. This ball is joined by the control sleeve, which in turn varies the position of the sleeve on the plunger. This flyweight is turned by means of a gear on the drive shaft. This in turn opens and is linked with the governor lever assembly. As the flyweight opens, the fuel is decreased by an amount depending on the speed of the engine. You can see as this rotates, the flyweight moves out and in turn linked to the governor lever assembly which in turn is connected to this ball to the sleeve of the plunger altering fuel injection quantity the governor lever assembly is linked to this control shaft which is in turn connected to the control lever this one is located outside of the pump
on the governor side this full load screw is linked to the governor lever assembly which in turn the ball connected to the control sleeve on the plunger varies the fuel delivery if you push this in this ball will move the control sleeve to give more fuel the pump is also equipped with a speed sensor this speed sensor generates pulses by means of the drive shaft gear. So how do you distinguish between inlet and outlet bolt? The inlet side is just a banjo bolt. On the outlet side, as you can see, it has a small hole inside there's a, there's a filter screen 